Hey, welcome to Guitar Knobs, the guitars, gear, noise, and nonsense podcast hosted today by these knobs. Tony Dudzik, Pick Guardian. Jared Brandon with Brandon Wound Pickups. Hey, everybody, it's me, Todd Novak. Welcome to the Guitar Knobs podcast. We are thrilled that you are joining us for this delicious ride on our show. Uh, We're going to have a great time talking about what are we t- what are we going to talk about tonight, Tony? We like to talk about gear and 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 the people who make the gear and specifically boutique gear, mm-hmm. and that would be stuff like guitars, and amps, and pedals, and accessories, and occasionally cables, mm. and uh, all the good stuff. Correct, Mundo. What else, Jared? Uh, we learn stuff with the one hundred and one episodes, and we learn about amp stuff, pickup stuff. All the stuff things we, wanna, we need to learn about. Yeah, all that the, you may not know all the stuff. All uh, basic food. What I think we're going to learn about something else tonight. Um, not in a one on one, but with a a, a a nice guest here. Guess who are you? I am uh, Gil Divine with uh, Divine Noise. We Ooh. make uh, cables. Right, and uh, some mighty fine cables. My, now these are the cables we've talked about in the past co- several times on the show, actually. Uh, oh really? This is the, yeah. This is the 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 famed fifty fifty half coily cable. It's fantastic. <laughs> oh, so wow. uh, we're gonna hear about Gil's backstory. I think he's got a pr- relatively interesting one, and uh, obviously we're gonna find out more about these fantastic cables uh, that he makes. And uh, you can go where where can be people people go check out what you make right now? Uh, they can go to uh, divinenoise dot com and. Um, we're on Instagram and you know all the social media stuff, but divinenoise.com is pre- pretty much the uh, the best. Right on. And if you are if you're doubting it at all, check out the artist list cuz uh, you know, go gunk. So. <laughs> um, let's see here. What uh, what what should we talk? Oh yeah, we got some announcements. Let's do that. Oh, wait, oh. actually by the way, I just talked to I just uh, was chatting with uh, Jeff Schroeder. He said hi. Oh, hey, oh wait, to me or yeah, to you, Gil. Oh, hi, Jeff. Directly, directly to Gil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he bypassed all you two, you two clowns. <laughs> he, he, he didn't say hi to me. Yeah, no, he did. Oh, okay. I think good. he's sending you some flowers, and oh, I think he's sending you. Jared a steak. Um, <laughs> that's my guy. <laughs> uh, we have some announcements to that's, make. That's that's right, and we're gonna start with. Road. That's right, Road Mics. Thank you so much, Road Mics, for providing our audio equipment, the Roadcaster Pro and the Procaster Mics with articulating arms. We love them. They work fantastic, so easy to use. And here's a little tidbit, everybody. Mm. There is a new, um, there's a new show in the in the Marvel. In the Marvel Network or whatever it is, uh, there's a new show. I'm sure many people have seen it already. Do you guys know what show I'm talking about? It's called One Division. I wonder who watches it. So we're I'm I was over there working on an episode, and this has to do with Road. I am tying this to Road. I'm working on an episode. I'm not really watching it because I'm not particularly into it. I just happened to poke my head up over my monitor, and I see an the int uh, the intro scene where this guy's like basically controlling this television universe thing. Uh-huh. And I'm looking at it. And from like 30 feet away, I said, that's the roadcaster pro. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then I said, stop, pause, go back. And I, sh- and I walked up and I go, that's what I make my podcast on. And they're uh, like, cool. why are you ruining it? <laughs> you know, it took you 10 minutes to explain that, right? I, but it was worth it. You Sounds like a Jared, Jared story. Yep, yeah, you pulled a Jared. <laughs> <laughs> I'm learning slowly. Uh, so anyways, yes, huge thanks. And congratulations on getting your product on a Marvel entity. That's pretty fun. Yeah, well, that's got to be it. some uh, some pricey product placement. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I also want to point out, we've got, we had uh, two little things I wanted to share. Uh, I got a note from Adam Johnson, one of our executive producers. Uh, hey. He said, uh, yeah, hello, Adam. He says, hello, gentlemen. I just listened to the recent episode with 37 effects. Great episode. Thank you. I reached out to Doug just to say hello and found that he lives 10 minutes from me. 
<laughs> just want to wow. say thanks for what you guys are doing in the gear community. So that's cool. Two those guys are going to probably meet up and have some donuts, some fun, some East Coast fun, whatever. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Anyways, East Coast? Massachusetts fun. Uh, yeah, probably lobster. They'll probably all just say Jared the whole time. Um, Dunkin' Donuts. Probably will. Yeah, sure. <laughs> exactly. Dunkin' Donuts with Jared. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's the coffee I drink every morning. We're gonna we're gonna mosey on forward, and we're gonna find out what's going on in our music worlds this week, guys. Yes. So Tony. Tony's gonna kick us off, and then we're gonna shuffle yeah. over to. Uh, uh, Washington, up in the Portland area, and hear from Gil. Yay! <laughs> well, let's see. So uh, so this week, um, I think a couple episodes back, we were talking about taking game controllers and or, you know, game things like the Scooby-Doo van. and Yeah, a with Cascade Pedals. Things, with Cascade Pedals. And uh, as I said, I, I picked up a couple on eBay, and they finally came in. And I started tearing into them, uh, cutting out the battery compartments and everything like that. And it's, I, it's, I'm shocked at how much space is available in these things. And uh, our good friend John Esterly is going to assist me with, um, with the, uh, the, the guts of it and the, and the layout and all that fun stuff. So I, have, uh, I was able to get a Millennium Falcon. Whoa. Which will become a Millennium Fuzz. Nice. Uh, I got one of the Scooby Doo uh, games. That's like the Mystery Machine Van. Mm-hmm. That's going to become the Scooby Dooby Drive. Nice. Um, what else was there? There was the oh Thomas the Tank Engine, and that's oh, going to yeah. be. Uh, Thomas the Trouble Boost, <laughs> and the best one is is it's supposed to hit this this week. It's a Darth Vader uh, controller mm-hmm. that is going nice. to become the Darth Phaser. Nice, oh, so clever, <laughs> and so clever, so clever. I like uh, it. But so the sad thing is, you know, these things are still plastic, and they're not going to, you know, they're yeah, certainly crush not. Them. Yeah, they're they're not roadworthy, but they're still they're going to look pretty cool. Um, so I'm excited about that, and it's it's always fun to work with John and and you know get his take on things and figure out. What, I got an what idea, my friend. Work. What's that? I got an idea. When you're done putting all the electronics in it, just mm-hmm. fill the whole thing up with uh, um, epoxy. Yes, I was going to say tar because I couldn't remember epoxy. Uh, cause everybody calls tar, you know, epoxy tar, yeah, on the tar, tar bags. Bags, yeah. but yeah, fill the whole thing up with epoxy and it should be pretty solid. Yeah, actually that would make sense. My only yeah. concern is the, the foot switch and oh, you know, yeah. stomp, stomp it down. You, you I've, just, well, it should be protected for the most part. Yeah. It, I it, think it, what I'm going to, I'm going to do is get, use a soft switch instead of a hard crunch. Yeah. Switch. There you go. There it That'll is. Help a little that's my jam, down. baby. Yeah. yeah, that's what that's what I'm. You can I'm run it over it. with a car after you're done. <laughs> so I will keep everyone posted as to how those come out, but I'm excited about that little little projects. Nice, I like it. Well, let's hear from uh, Gil. What's going on in your music world? My music world. I've been making other people's cables. I'm still in the Christmas rush, so mm. oh. I, I've been stuck working long hours and so that's that's the only gear related thing i've been working on is uh catch is, up is work um although there is a uh, guitar uh silvertone 1446 that i'm um, i'm thinking about pulling a trigger on but i don't know if i need need another guitar so you always oh, need that's another sacrilege. I, know. I know it is i um yeah, yeah. So you know, that's 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 really that's really about it. I haven't picked up a guitar in um, in probably over a week. The fourteen forty six is that the the one that has metal binding on it, um, or am I thinking of a different model? I think of like the is it the Chris Isaac model? It is the Chris Isaac model. Yes. Okay. Yep. Yep. So yeah, th- those are very cool guitars. They are. I'm always kind of sketched about ordering stuff online and i mean it comes from one of one of our dealers one of uh, uh 
one of our dealers, so I, I t- totally trust them. But um, I like to play things before I buy them. I don't know. I guess uh, stuck in my ways a little bit. <laughs> sure. Because I know, you know, people like, you know, people like buying online. You know, I'll probably end up buying it. Yeah, because I think you should. I know. That's an interesting thing, though. I was considering this the other day, actually, which is like the idea of, you know, shopping for a guitar online versus shopping, like going in and picking it up and playing it and da 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 da. Like, I think if you're really, really familiar with the guitar that you're, or the type of guitar, you're probably going to get what you expect to some degree. But yeah. if you're not, then, it, you know, you won't. Uh, it, but it also is like connecting with the guitar. There's some about that. You know, if you pick up a friend's guitar or you pick up a guitar that you want, you're like, oh, oh, this one's got this. This one's talking to me. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. I, I've played a, a lot of guitars and I've played a lot of the same model of guitars, sure. I should say. And some have a feeling to them. Some have... Um, or no feeling. Even or, or, or exactly. Worse. I mean, that's... Yeah. Exactly. Sometimes you bond with a guitar. Sometimes you don't. Yeah. And, it, you know, it could be the same model of guitar that you bond with. You know, it, you know it's, it's an it's a individual thing. Mm-hmm. And um, one of our requirements to be a, a divine noise dealers that you must have a brick and mortar store because I, I like that. I want other people to, to value that uh, relationship you have with your guitar, your local guitar store. Yeah. And th- the way the world's going now, it's, it, it's, it's becoming a rarer and a rarer. That's hard to absolutely. say, by the way, <laughs> Jared's mentioned this many, many times on the podcast. Um, I mean, I think Tony shares the same opinion, but I think Jared's been more vocal about it, about the brick and mortar thing. It is always nice, you know, and it, it's it's really funny. I mean, if you go back in through time, I mean, the Mon Pa stores were the only way to buy instruments back, you know, going back into the 60s, 70s, and even into the 80s. And then, you know, then, you know, the giant stores started opening up across the country and pushed the Mon Pa stores out. And now we're kind of seeing a reversal of that now is mm-hmm. because it's, it's some of those giant stores have financial problems. Um, yeah. there's still some very cool specialty shops that are opening up and, uh, I'm, I'm excited about that because I, I, I I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely in agreement. It's nice to support a, a, you know, a local business and especially somebody that's likes music gear enough to, you know, roll the dice and, and open up a store. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. I Such think a gamble these days, you know, going into a big box store, Every time you go in there, there's a new face behind the counter. You don't know that person. And I'm I'm not saying this about everyone that works there, but you know, you can kind of you can kind of tell there's just they're just it's just fake trained hospitality. Yeah. It's it's Where a job. You go into, you know, you go into your buddies like I have a buddy that owns a guitar shop in my hometown. I'll go up when I go there for to visit family. Oh, pre-COVID. I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll go into the store and it's like being home. It's like going to a family member's house because yeah. I know the person. Yeah. I'm very close with them. They know me. They'll call me if something really cool comes in that they know that I'll, you know, that I'll buy and I'll pay the price um, without haggling with them because I want to support him. And, totally. and I think those are those are really healthy kind of relationships. Uh, in my opinion, and that's it's very rewarding. So, yeah, yeah, totally. that yeah I, I have no problem paying more money going and supporting a um, a, a small um, independently owned shop. Um, I, you know, just have I, I have big um, uh, conflicts with buying from you know Amazon, and you know I won't I will never do business with the Guitar Center, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, or you know. I, it's just, it's, um, it's also kind of, totally if, awesome. if you know, then, you know, and you go directly to you, you know, it's, you know, we get a lot of sales. Um, people do buy directly from us, but I always tell people go to the dealers. They're yeah. the one that's, you know, they're, they're, they're taking the chance, support them. Mm-hmm. Don't, don't offer our cables. Uh, don't offer sales on our cables because we don't. We've never had a sale in the what twelve years we've been in business, mm-hmm. and we never will. 
So I don't want that. That um, You're right there with Levi's and Ray-Ban. Gee, many Christmas. <laughs> Keeping yeah. good company. Yeah. Well, I, I just, you know, I, I make every cable. So I don't want someone um, cheapening my labor or yeah. cheapening cheapening our our product and um man this got way off topic that's okay (laughs) you know i i we were just before we started we were talking about um we've got nam coming nam announcements happened and you know all of this all of the guitar switchboards across the country lit up and (laughs) you know we we started talking about that and i'm personally you know really really excited but for next january um but we were talking about the experience of the specifically the Nashville NAM experience where, yeah, we went there, but we also spent, you know, like two days just going to all the guitar shops because the the concentration of it doesn't exist anywhere else. I mean, it just, sure. I, 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 at least I don't think it does. Maybe I'm wrong, but, um, there's some uh, New York, New York's got quite a few still like in, in a, you know, you can get to them in a, in, in a day for sure. Yeah. Uh, um, Chicago's got some great shops. Really true. True. Yes. Great yes. Um, but when you go to Southern California, you're not, that's kind well, you of gotta the drive land forever to get to anywhere. Yeah. It, it's the land of uh, guitar center and you know, yeah. there's, there's guitar centers everywhere and, um, yeah, yeah, if you're, if you're into that, you know, they're, they're around there, but I'd much rather go to a place like Nashville or Chicago or, um, um, yeah, New York, you know, just spend, place- spend an hour and a half just looking at every single thing in Carter Vintage. Like that's worth the, the price mm-hmm. yeah. of gas yeah. to drive there to do that. So totally. or a rumble seat or, you know, pick, pick a shop, a East side music supply. He's like, you know, it's fantastic. So anyways, um, so why don't we uh, shift over to find out what Jared's been uh, doing besides hustling on awesome pickups? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I got a new project that I got on another old- one. Yeah. Oh, he's a project. dude. Mm. I could not help myself. I love the SG. <laughs> and uh really? oh i love well i mean SG. i know you love the sg you got like seven of them so my first no, I've, I've gotten i've sold some of those okay uh my first sg when i was 16 was like in 1973 74 and uh those were made is that uh, when they started making like the walnut Colored ones? Yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm, um those were yeah mine was cherry though okay but that's when they were they were they were uh, really spitting them out out of the factory. They weren't. Those are the standards were actually done pretty well. Those were quality guitars. Mm-hmm. Uh, the standards were, and the one I had was a tank. It was great. Um, I was looking at a project on it. It was just a husk, so just the body, the carcass. And, um, yeah, the carcass. Mm-hmm. And there was a custom going for like seven hundred bucks. So it was an SG custom. So what that means is it has the it has the diamond inlay. It has the binded headstock, diamond inlay in the headstock, kind of like a uh, you know a Les Paul custom, mm-hmm. and uh, had nice big square inlays binding on the neck, and then just and then a body with you know comes with the three pickups. Um, that sounds that's pretty the, cool looking. Yeah, so it's see, like the original uh, Les Paul SGs. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But it, this one had a stop tail. So I'm like, you know, all my SGs that I have, none of them have stop tails. So I'm like, you know, this is a really cool. But the one thing I didn't like about it is, uh, well, two things. I didn't like the, the headstock repair, but that's why it was going for so cheap. Mm. And then uh, the color was that uh, walnut. Mm. Me no likey the walnut. <laughs> really? <laughs> I hate I there's walnut. Some, there's, there's something kind of cool about that one. Yeah, not. It's cool if it's on an acoustic. <laughs> it's cool if it's on an acoustic guitar, right? Or if you're in like fog hat or something. Uh, yeah. Put a bunch of stickers on it. But anyway, or if you like, if you like changing baby diapers. <laughs> yes. Yes, that's what it reminds me of. So yeah, I picked it up for uh, under thirteen. So, 
uh, which is really cheap. One one of those with all the you know all the original you know parts on it that's in okay condition, go anywhere from three to five thousand. So wow, Jesus, yeah, five. Well, if it's really clean, maybe in the six thousands. Wow. So Jared, Jared, are you going to share with your thoughts on? Uh, what you would like to do with this guitar? Oh, I know what I'm doing with it. It's, <laughs> it's going to be purple sparkle, baby. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going original color. That's really and, cool. Uh, yeah, I'm not. Uh, not uh, another fun fact about those. I don't know if anybody re- uh, remembers what the harmonica bridges look like. Yeah. And I think when I was talking to Tony, for some dumb reason, I called it a banjo bridge. <laughs> it's, it's called a harmonica bridge because it's really, really wide. It, look mm-hmm. like, it looks like a harmonica. Is that the Nashville bridge? It's right before the Nashville bridge. It's, okay. it's, if you look up harmonica bridge, like Gibson Les Paul Har- or Gibson SG harmonica bridge, you'll be like, what? Yeah, it's a, it's a big rectangular bridge that has uh, it's slots huge. in it. And it's just... Yeah, it's it's, it's definitely <laughs> it's it's a it's a big big honking piece of metal. Yeah, yeah. that'll look cool. It's almost as big as the golden ticket in in the chocolate factory movie. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally know those bridges. Yeah, so uh not gonna put one of those on there. I'll probably just go with a yeah, I'll go with a Nashville on on that. So probably gold hardware, uh Nashville bridge. Um Purple sparkle. Like it's going to be the Prince like, SG. Gee, many Christmas. Yes. Gold yeah. hardware and a purple sparkle. Well, you've seen uh, Jared's yeah. Prince tribute, haven't you? Actually, you know, G.E. Smith inspired me uh, to get that. I remember seeing G.E. Smith on SNL in the 90s, um, and he had a purple sparkle um, jazz master he was playing. Oh. Mm. So I'll always remember that. And you only had like a few seconds to look at the band play before it went to commercial. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, Jared likes the purple sparkle. I do. That's cool. That's fun. That's great. Yeah. Don't, you don't have to, I think that one of the cool things about you picking that one up, even, even if it has a headstock repair, as long as it works, is that well, you cover. don't have to worry about like, oh, am I ruining it? If I change anything, uh, they can... already ruined it when it was brand new in the color of <laughs> yeah. walnut. So. Well, that's the great thing about buying, you know, carcasses is that you can make it exactly how you want it and yeah. you don't have to worry about, um, you know, making yeah. it. There's no reason to pay for, you know, overpriced, overinflated uh, original parts for that thing anyway. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, the guitar should should do what you what you want or mm-hmm. they, they should work how you want. Um, that's, you know, I, I, I can't see ever buying a, you know, pristine vintage guitar. It's just I don't want to have to worry about it. Right. Um, you want to play it. want to play it. I want to beat it. And, you know, I don't want to worry about a, a scratch and, right. or, you know, I, I don't want to, you know, worry about, oh, is this original? Is this original? Just play it. And if it sounds good, then that's kind of the important thing to me. Yeah. Okay. That, that reminds me of something. Um, uh, I saw a post today. I can't remember. Uh, somebody was working on, uh, it was a, I think it was like a, f- uh, was it like, is this TV yellow junior? Like from what is Tony knows the age on was what, 50, Late fifties, late fifties, yeah, fifty, mm-hmm. whatever. And um, and this thing was like in pretty rough. The body was in very, very used condition, but it was still super, super cool. And one of the coolest things on it, and I had a zoom in. I was like, "Is that what I think it is?" It looked like an old school desk that someone who was like in detention had carved their name on. Awesome. <laughs> and it was. It wasn't huge, one, two, and it was just. One, it was two, just kind of there. And I was like, on the floor. I mean, that absolutely made that so special. And it's not even mine. I was like, I love that guitar automatically. <laughs> right now. The hilarious thing is if think about yourself, bringing, bringing yourself to do that to one of your guitars, that's ludicrous. Who's going to do that? But somebody did back then. And that's, that's super cool. Yeah. I have a, uh, a 72 Les Paul gold top that someone 
routed, I bought it as a carcass and someone had routed out a third pickup in, in the center. They were obviously an Ace Freely fan oh, because yeah. they also put, in, they carved a star in the uh, headstock. So <laughs> that's cool. I mean, that's yeah. kind of fun. Do you got yeah. some? You I know? filled it in. It, it's been filled in and uh, yeah, I wouldn't like that. Yeah. But it's, it's one of my favorite guitars. That's cool. Uh, now, yeah. let me ask you guys, is there a place, since we're talking about carcasses, I don't know that everybody knows how or where to look for those because I think it's an exciting thing. I'm very interested in this subject right now. Last last week we talked about, I was talking about my birthday coming up and, um, you know, they're like, oh, you should get a guitar for your year. And I started looking. I was like, well, only if I sell my car, both of them. Um, so I... I uh, a carcass is something I can probably maybe get into where, where would you guys tell people to go look for that kind of stuff? I mean, I usually go to eBay. There's a couple of sellers that I deal with. And, um, if, if there's a particular s instrument type you want, like, you know, Gibson project or Gibson neck body, do a search for that. Uh, reverb usually has a couple of sellers on there too that, you know, and you know, it's, it's kind of, some people are real uptight about what a couple some of these sellers do, which is to take a guitar and take it apart and part out, you know, the pickups and the metal parts and the tuners and, and everything else. But I kind of look at it as an opportunity to be able to, uh, I think as Gil said, put, put something back together the way that you want it with yeah. the pickup with the tuning machines and the bridge and everything that you want yeah. and usually at a, at a, you know, much reduced price. I've, I've done it a dozen times, maybe more. Mm. That's yeah, great. It's, um, it, it's the way I, I used to look for guitars. I don't know where to get a, to do that now. I mean, we're, we're, I did a lot of my, uh, my, uh, buying and, um, and looking and shopping for carcasses in the mid nineties mm -hmm. where, you know, I'd go to a, an old a guitar store, um, you know, that does repairs. They always have stuff, you know, that piled in the back room. That's where I used to get it. I mean, uh, back in the nineties, you could still buy, I mean, that first SG I was talking about earlier, heck I, I paid 500 bucks and it was in mint condition. Now you can't touch something like that for less than, you know, 2,500 bucks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, back in the '90s, you could still get really good stuff for cheap. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess, I guess, in hindsight, you know, this is reminding me um, that I was speaking with uh, some folks from a place called uh, on on Instagram. They've got a thing called Sonic underscore Artifacts, and it's a new uh, podcast that they're doing. And it says, um, "Hey, love what you do, and have been a fan of your podcast for a while. Thank you." My friend and I started up a gear podcast highlighting the best deals in NYC and LA on the used market. New show every Tuesday. So one of them's obviously in LA and one of them's in New York, I think. Um, okay. But that's, you know, talking about finding, you know, weird, wild, good deals. That might be something to check out. That's uh, Sonic Artifacts. Thanks for dropping us a line, guys. And good luck on your show. Yeah, that's a that's a great opportunity if you're around there. Indeed, Aroni. Uh, let's see. Moving on to me. How about you, Todd? Well, thank you, Tony. I well, I had the delightful opportunity not only to visit my good friend Tony um, in person uh -huh. um, at the door. Uh, we exchange gear all the time, and I said, Tony, I'm you know I'm thinking about uh, some different pickup stuff and. Uh, I do you have something with like a like a TV Jones and a solid body? And he says, duh. So <laughs> I came over and he brought out a case and I got to go home. And so I was playing with that. It was uh, really interesting. I hadn't played one before. I'd never played a TV Jones. Sorry, everybody. Um, <laughs> Tony, can you can you just tell anybody who may not be familiar with a TV Jones pickup? Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Well, yeah, Tom Jones, who is the TV and tv jones um his 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 whole niche of of pickups were filtertrons and in fact gretch hired tom to uh redesign the uh the diarmon style uh pickups for their japanese line 
uh, when they first started doing putting uh, you know th those style of pickups in in that um, the Gretsch custom shop and, and and most of the upper end models use TV Jones filtertrons not just you know Gretsch pickups in 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 their guitars so he's kind of like the the filtertron Gretsch style pickup guru he also makes high low trons what's a high low tron high low tron was kind of this it's essentially the same shape as a filtertron but it's a single coil pickup mm. so the so the humbucker would be like a goodbye tron uh, that was terrible. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I, I was sitting on that. I was like, what can I do? Think fast, Todd. <laughs> I thought fast. It just wasn't very good. Yeah. Sometimes <laughs> fast does not equal good. <laughs> but yeah. So, uh, so the guitar that, that, uh, I, I lent to Todd to give a tryout has, uh, one of TV Jones. Um, well, it's got a, a, a classic, which is basically his, his version of a, of a, of a, you know, a standard filtertron, uh, coupled with a, um, uh, powertron in the power actually a powertron plus in the bridge, which is something that, uh, TV Jones, uh, designed for, uh, Billy Gibbons from ZZ top. So I, I, that's kind of my go-to combination for things in the bridge. I usually put the powertron plus and then, you know, a standard classic in the, in the neck. And it's a, it's a really nice, combination i think i mean there's a lot of juice in the in the powertron um as as you probably found out yeah i found that it it kind of what i didn't like about it is that it didn't it it, it was perfect if you were doing um no pedals i i can understand that because it already it sounded like it was already distorting like when i put it with my pedals i was losing that clarity i was gaining i was gaining mm -hmm. some some not distortion, but I was gaining like an overdriven kind of a borderline, like really, really, really low fuzz sound. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's, um, that's, a, that's a hot pickup. So yeah, uh, I would want a not hot pickup then. Okay. Well, then you're probably looking at the classic or a classic plus. Okay. All right. Thanks. And a side of fries, please. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, hey, by the way, yeah. if you wanted something like that, let me know. I can do those. All righty. Oh, well, look at that. We got a pickup builder. Who knew? Huh. Who knew? Uh, all right, gentlemen. Well, um, we are going to forego the the four on the floor. Um, yeah, it's all right. It's all right. Um, you know, Gil is a uh, Gil just was like, yeah, I, I, I'm going to bypass that. And that's OK. Not everybody does it. Not everybody wants to. And that's a OK. Is that a true bypass? Oh, very <laughs> good. Very good. OK. Well, two points begin. Um, <laughs> so, uh, Gil, you still yeah. with us, right? You still there? I'm still with you. I'm right here. Perfect. Um, <clears throat> we need to find out a little bit about your what you what you provide to the guitar world, um, and then I want to dig in a little bit about uh, you know we'll start where you are, and then we'll kind of work our way backwards. How about that? Well, start where I am and work backwards. Um, well, okay. Yeah. So yeah. you are making some really, uh, excellent guitar cables and specifically that you, you're specializing in, in the, the coily, the coily types. Is that fair to say? Oh yeah. Um, specialize. They're I, known I for maybe. Uh, yeah, they're quite popular. Okay. Uh, they're yeah, popular uh, maybe. A, a lot of uh, a lot of people use our our coil cables. It's the same wire though as our stray cable. Mm -hmm. We coil our stray cable to make I, yeah. a coil cable. So there's, I think we might be one of the only ones that do that. Most companies buy existing coiled wire. Really, I didn't know. So that's that's interesting. So yeah, that's why ours sound like actual guitar cables, and they sound they're not dark and muddy, which mm. oh, a lot of them can can be um yeah. oh man uh, my whole life is flashing before my eyes right now <laughs> well t tell you what tell you what i want to i would just because i have one of these and it was recommended to me like the minute we were talking about this let me give you a little bit of backstory since you weren't listening to that episode when we were doing it i want a curly cable because i'm just tired of having like loops and loops of 
cable and I need it to move around and go get things and not have to take off my guitar every two seconds. Or if I'm on stage, then, you know, I've, I've only got a certain amount of length. I don't, I, I just wanted one. Sure. So I said, I'm going to do my diligence and, and find some. And I looked at several different ones and I was mm -hmm. not pleased with any of them for various reasons. Some of them were just wound to fit over a baseball bat, which I could not figure out. I was like, why on earth is this wine <clears throat> fender? Uh, <laughs> it was just like, this is ridiculous and super heavy and very short. I'm like, what's the point of this? I don't understand. The My thing is... And I've used rattlesnake cables for, for ages. And what I love about um, Hank's cable is, number one, they're virtually indestructible. They sound great. And they've got this the snake head cable that it calls. So it, the, it, he's got a casing on it, a nylon, a nylon flex kind of casing the thing. Goes, flex yeah, yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. that goes over it. But the last like foot or so isn't wrapped like that it's mm -hmm. just the cable and so you can slip it on your uh your um strap and and it works fantastic it's got a lot of it's it's just you know it's floppy it's easy to you know it doesn't get all bound up and everything mm -hmm. so i'm like why can't i find a curly cable that does this because all of them only afford you like six inches or five inches even and uh it was just kind of making me nuts so i said well I, i'll just get a I'll get this other cable that I got. That's okay. And it was relatively cheap. So it's probably not, you know, the best thing on the planet. And I took a hairdryer to it and I'm like, I'm going to straighten this out. So I was sitting there in the, <laughs> <laughs> I was in the garage and I hung it up and I put a weight on it, you know, and the whole thing to keep it straight. And I just, and I sat there with a hairdryer and he did it up and it pretty much worked. But I knew I was like, this is not the right thing to do. And I want to so like a stretched out cord. Well, kind of. Um, so you want the tangent, where the, the, the piece or the, the part of a coil cable that is straight before it goes into the coil and before the plug is called a tangent. Gotcha. Yeah. So you, you wanted that. You, I, you wanted that long. Yes. I needed it longer so I could, you know, do the right up under your, your strap gotcha. and, and all that business. Yep. Uh, so I was belly aching about it on a show and mm -hmm. um, got a call from our, uh, my, my, our, our mutual friend, Joe Calio of uh, Seven mm -hmm. Horse and everything. He's like, dude, what are you doing? You got to get a hold of, of Divine Noise. Like they got exactly what you were looking for. And I'm like, fantastic. I'll check it out. And <laughs> he pointed out, he's like, I'm using the 50-50. So I checked out the 50-50 and I was like, that's fantastic. I love that idea. And, uh, you know, because then I don't actually have to have the heavy coil at the guitar. Sure. I can actually have the coil near the pedal board. Sure. It's just, it's a brilliant design. And, and, or you could go either way. I've seen, I've seen, you know, I watched some videos. I've seen it used, you know, in both ways. But, um, so it's a really, really versatile idea. And you gave enough room in the, what'd you call that? The thoroughfare avenue? The, the bottleneck? Tangent. Oh, okay. Right. On. The switchback. My bottleneck. On the, you meant on the, tangent. On the switchback, you get no. <laughs> on the tangent, you left enough room. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know why that it's, it boggles my mind. Like when well, people make stuff. Line, there's a fine line between having too much and not enough of mm -hmm. a tangent. Um, sometimes people don't wrap their. Um, their cable through the strap. Well, they're uh, doing it wrong, Gil. <laughs> I, I worked for a band for uh, almost 10 years. That, yeah. Uh, Yola Tango. They do not do that. And uh, the, the very first prototype of our curly cable um, was uh, James McNews. I made it for him. And it had a really short uh, tangent because he plays a jazz bass and he uh, – plugs it in without wrapping it through the cable. So the tangent's really short because mm -hmm. you don't want it too long because then it's going to Yeah, if you have a top mount, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So it, um, yeah. So it's, you know, finding a place mm -hmm. where it's not too long. So people that don't wrap their straps, you know, are going to be happy with it. And 
and having enough of a, a long enough tangent that, uh, you know, people that wrap it through the straps are happy. So it's, it's, um, I get it. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. So you also have the regular curly cables, which is like curly from end to end, you know, yep. with some yep. tangent, which sounds like you are still affording uh, a decent amount of tangent on, on at least one of those ends. Uh, they both have, both sides have ten. ten both inches. sides have the thoroughfare we need. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, uh, and it I, comes in purple, Jared. I think the reason why um, the tangents weren't very long before is, I mean, what's the whole reason why you wrap that thing around and do the wrappy thing anyway? To what? To avoid pulling the cord out if you step on it, right? Yeah. For the well, most part, on a curly cord, you have all that all that buoyancy from the boinging of the curliness <laughs> of the cord. Yes. You have all that less and weight. The and weight. Yeah. So I think that's, that's probably why you don't, it, it wouldn't be so, um, you know, terrible if you stepped on the cord with a curly cord. Mm. Interesting. I think that's, yeah. that's why, but you know, if there was enough tangent, I would just do the same. I would wrap it around too. Yeah. Cause that's just what you do. Yeah, uh, I, I would. I'm interested. You you mentioned that a lot of curled cables sound coily cables sound sound dark. Yep. Yeah. Now, and, and that just due from using a high capacitance uh, um, wire, a kind of a cheaper um, yeah wire. That, uh, but since ours is made from our guitar cable. It has, you know, fairly low, a much lower capacitance than those other coil cables. Mm -hmm. And that, and it's, it's 30 feet of cable. Well, ours is 30 feet. Um, curly cables are, you know, anywhere from 20 to 30 feet. And, you know, that's a lot of wire, especially if you're using a, a high capacity. And wire can sound really dark. That's why is because of all that wire. Well, and to be clear, it's not 30 feet as coiled. No. It's shorter. You just, you are using 30 feet of wire, but it's coming out to... Like 20? Five and a half feet. It's coiled up. Five and a half feet retracted. So the coil cable's not being pulled. That's that's it being retracted, and that's brand new. So it's probably, you can probably pull it at 20 feet. They, Any they more than pulled. that, you just need a wireless, right? I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they um, you know, they get pulled and tugged, and um, uh, they still last forever. Yeah, you know, we have curly cables that have been on the road for you know over ten years that um, you know that still are great and yeah we um, I the only way when we first started people were asking for us to do a coil cable and the only way I would do it is if I could do it with our wire so it sounded good and that it was reliable because at the time. We're talking 2009. There weren't really many reliable coil cables on the market. Mm -hmm. uh, right. So still aren't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah. So that's the only way I would do it. And you know, it's it's so so rare that that there's ever an issue with our with our cables. And um, and they come in know. and they come in multicolor. So like Jared can get his purple one. Yeah. Uh, we think you, you got yeah. guitar knobs orange. I see. You've got um, the white one for ones that want white cables and red and black. Doing the Jimi Hendrix thing. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I mean, let me add, um, when I was a kid, uh, my dad had a couple of these curly cables around, but his were from the early 70s. And uh, I remember when I was, a, you know, 10 or 11, when I was first starting to play electric guitar, he pulled a few of those out for me. And uh, over the years, I think they finally started to short out. And I went, I remember going to fix those and man, that the insulation and the, I, they were so stinking heavy duty that that was really, <laughs> really thick, rubbery plastic material, whatever they use, some sort of cancer causing material back then. <laughs> and it, it, it's you know, I mean, <laughs> they were super heavy duty and yes, they did last forever. I mean. But uh, I, I wish I still had those curly cords from, you know, 1971 or whatever. Yeah. You know, I'm sure by now they, they probably would have been pretty Crack. oxidized, yeah. uh, the, the copper yeah. in it. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, is that why there, cables tend to go out? Is that the what's the number one reason that people go like, oh, my cable don't work no more? Uh, uh, poor solder joints. Yeah, um, improperly soldered breaks at the solder connection a lot gotcha. of times. We get a lot of people that you know that'll email us. I just got one today. In fact, oh, my cables don't work. Okay, well, let's bypass everything. Let's buy, let's troubleshoot it and bypass the pedal board and plug it directly into the amp. Because, you know, th- these days, a lot of pedal manufacturers and guitar manufacturers, you know, they, they use really cheap jack, especially, you know, with, with pedals. So when we get someone that has an issue, it's like, I want to make sure that, you know, it's we're bypassing as much as possible as far as, you know, the signal. I just want to go directly into the amp. And, you know, nine times out of 10, it's, you know, a bad jack somewhere or the oxidation is another really, really big thing where if you're hearing crackling, a lot of times it's, it's, it's oxidation on the plugs themselves. Mm. If you go to our YouTube channel, there's a video on there of my wife, Nicole, who's the other half of Divine Noise. It has her showing you demonstrating how to clean your plugs. Oh, it's such an overlooked thing, clean, you know, making sure there's no oxidation on on the plugs. If you haven't done it in a long time, try it, and I guarantee you, you will hear a difference. Well, probably with your actual guitar jack too. I mean, those yeah, are absolutely. notoriously those rust notoriously. Absolutely. So you know, especially with a with uh, being a, a touring guitar tech, a former touring, touring guitar tech, I would. Um, you know, maybe once every six months or once every few months, I would take uh, take out all the, the cables and clean them, um, clean the plugs with the oxit and spray it in there and make sure that, you know, it's there's no corrosion or oxidation on them. And, you know, it sounds always sounds a lot better. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's something that um, people might want to try if their uh, cables crackling or why right. not is, is, is try cleaning, try cleaning the plug and right. making sure that there's no, there's no well, and, and aside from your, uh, your curly cables uh, and the 50, 50 cable, which I encourage everybody to go check out. We'll throw that out again. The divine noise.com. Um, if or you, divine noise.com or divine noise. Got Tom that did I say got Tom? Yeah, <laughs> got, well, um, I got Tom. You do have Tom. <laughs> so, um, you also make a host of other things like straight cables and tech flex cables and teeny cables and speaker cables and combo amp speaker cables and XLR and TRS cables. So, yes. basically, yes. Of- you need a cable, you can handle that. Absolutely. All of our cables are all proprietary. I designed all of them over the years. I don't sell it in bulk. I don't sell our, our cables in bulk. The, the biggest thing is that it has my name on it. So right. I want to make sure it's built properly. My my biggest fear is that is that someone will uh, have a bad cable and they look, oh, it's a divine noise. These are crap. Well, you know, it's, if I were to start selling it in bulk, anyone could build it. And, you know, then it would. Um, sure. Yeah. That's not good. Want, we don't need not, that. So it's all about quality control with us. We're uh, kind of obsessed with quality control. I like in, that. In the, in the 12 years that that we've been in business, I've made every single Divine Noise cable. Wow. So regardless of where you see it, if it's, you know, in a shop, one of our dealers in Australia or, you know, on Nels Klein's guitar mm-hmm. or, you know, regardless of where you see or it. Or Jeff like, Schroeder's guitar. Yeah, Schroeder's guitar, absolutely. Or Joe Collio's guitar. Yeah, yeah, I've made every single one. Now, you mentioned uh, you're a touring guitar tech. Let's uh, talk a little bit about that, because I think, if nothing else, aside from it just being interesting, that is the kind of thing that sets you up to make the decisions that go into a great piece of gear, like the one that you're building. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, my, my biggest thing is for a cable not to fail. The the thing I hated the most when I was a, a touring guitar tech was having something fail and having to go out in front of, you know, hundreds to thousands of people and fix something. <laughs> Cause it's you know, you have to yeah. you have to really 
you have to. It know. breaks the it breaks the vision. It breaks. It, yes, it, it breaks that because uh, as a guitar tech, you don't really want to be seen. Uh, you know that it's not your show; it's the band's show. So right. It's so like when I, you see the boom mic come down in like the movies that Tony's watch. Tony watches. <laughs> <laughs> exactly it ruins the mood if you will well so. can't you give anyone a break todd <laughs> no was that something that you started doing when you were touring i know that this is somewhat of a i don't know if it's a common thing but it's a somewhat known thing at least to to me i don't i'm sure everybody knows more but uh if you're touring and you're in charge of, you know, a stable of instruments and all the parts that go with it, at some point you're like, if I'm controlling it, I know what this is doing. Is that when you started building cables? Uh, it was probably before that when I was just a, a broke musician in the mid nineties that couldn't afford cables. Mm. They are, couldn't afford to buy brand new cables and had to repairs and fix things. And what you take care of is kind of your world. And you want to make sure everything is, is taken care of. And before I started, I, I didn't really have anyone that I could call and say, hey, make this exactly like this and ship it out. I, I would have to make it myself. Right. Hmm. So, because I knew that if I did it, it was done correctly. And, you know, it, it's just, it's, it's kind of a, a control thing. And um, yeah, it, it's, it's, I just don't, I don't like leaving anything to chance. Mm-hmm. Well, that's a common theme that we've heard with uh, the likes of uh, of um, Drew Foppy. You know, we've had him on talking about that several times, and just the, con- the the quality control and how important it is that um, you know, just like your your name is on your cable, his name is on is the show going well, and so was yours at that time. So it sounds like you have a, a similar ethos there. Oh, absolutely. I mean, when it's your career, when it's, you know, how you live, the most important thing to you is your is your name, because it doesn't take too many bad shows or whatever things get around, you know, you get a reputation of so you want to take care of everything. And you want to make sure everything is is as best as it can be really taking your job serious. So, uh, Gil, I really appreciate you going through all of uh, the notables about these cables, and I really do encourage people to go check them out. I got one myself, and I really, really like it. I'm going to actually let Tony check it out as well. He was curious about yeah, it. I was. I, as I, I think we talked a couple episodes back, back in the when I was playing a lot more in the 80s, I had a, an old Whirlwind half-and-half half cable. Yeah, that's where yeah. the half-and-and-a-half half thing got started. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, I think it was called um, a constrictor. It might have been, yeah. Um, that's kind of how ours came to be. Was someone at someone that worked at uh, True Tone Guitars in LA asked me if I could build something like that, and I had no idea the dimensions, so I, I kind of based it on our curly and made them thirty feet and. Um, yeah. Yeah. That was, that. I mean, that w- it, it really did come in handy, although, you know, it, it eventually did. The, I think the end broke on it because of the, if I had that end plugged into the amp, uh, as opposed to going to a pedal, uh, it would, you know, the weight of the, of the coil would pull down on it considerably. Mm. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Well, um, that's pretty cool, man. I appreciate that. Everybody needs to go check that out, uh, divinenoise.com, and check uh, get yourself into one of these uh, here cables uh, and any one of the types that, that they offer. Not You don't have to go get the, the 50-50 if you don't want to. Get a different kind. Surprise yourself. Uh, we're going to mosey on over to Jared's house. That's right. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for our little favorite game, which nobody wins except me, <laughs> called <laughs> Would You Rather? That's a nice one, Jared. Yeah, thank you. This week's Would You Rather. You walking down the street. Gosh, and you that run hurts. Into, <laughs> and you run into your uh, good old buddy, Claudio Kuna. And Claudio has a question for you. So He's you're like, in hey, Brazil? Man, it's where you are. Okay, so we're in Brazil. 
Yeah, it's awesome like. food, by the way. Yeah. Uh, he's like, hey, man, I got a, I got a question for you. Mm-hmm. So, so your favorite guitarist that has passed away, right? So a dead guitarist that, you know, is gone. <laughs> yeah. Well, yes. Synonymous with passed away. We, this is going yeah. well. And not coming back to life. <laughs> would you? Thanks would for you the rather, clarification. But however, would you rather? Would you rather resurrect your favorite dead guitarist for a tiny private concert, one night only, and then they go back to being dead, or <laughs> have your chosen artist's most iconic guitar forever? So you either get him back for one night only, or you get to just have their guitar forever. For some artists, I think this would be very, if it, it, depending on who you're choosing, this could be very difficult, actually. You need to choose, and this would you rather, I'm going to go ahead and say that you must choose one of your absolute favorite guitarists. Okay. That are dead. That are dead. <laughs> All right. Yep. Thank you. Mm. Oh, this is a good one. This is a really good one. We're going to start with Tony, hit Jared, uh, swing over to Gil, and I'll wrap it up. Uh, the, the question is, if we bring them back to life for one day, would they still be able oh, to Oh, I knew you were going to ask that. I knew you were going to make it like a zombie thing. <laughs> well, yeah, they, they do a one-night-only private concert. Yeah, just as they were. They're like, oh, hey, this is sweet. Um, so I, like a bag of bones. In their, in yeah. their, in their prime. Yeah, in, in their prime. flesh. So in the flesh, and they don't. They don't. John they don't smell of, they don't smell of Tony John rotting, Lennon. Rotting flesh. Yeah, right, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> well, which version in their prime? Okay. In their prime, yes. Okay. Whatever their prime was. Got okay, it. Tony. Okay. Wow. You know, boy, that's you know. So yeah, the the whole the the John Lennon thing definitely comes to mind. And you know, the we've actually had that I think as a as an option to have that guitar hit one of his ricks. Um, but I was so devastated, you know, what was it, 40 years ago? Yeah, 1980. Uh, yeah. And uh and I I would I would probably give anything to have, even if it's just for one night, to have John Lennon back to um, to play a show, not even play a show, just to to hang out and and tip a tip a few beers with. Mm-hmm. Um, not that I ever did that before, but you know, since this is a would you rather, I, I think I I would take that experience over having a guitar that belonged to that person. Yeah, any day of the week. Yeah, I can dig that. I knew you were going to say that, and I knew exactly how that was going to go down. Yeah, but that's because we all, that's because we need each other. I, I appreciate that, Jared. Have a Jared. <laughs> um, it. I mean, I guess. I guess if I could have my dad back, because I mean he's one of my favorite guitarists, I would burn every guitar I inherited for him to just have him come back for well, one more night. All right, yeah. but let me. Yeah, that's you know, that's, that's your dad. Memory. That's like I had to say that though because I know you did. I have in my heart, but um, Jimi Hendrix, man, I, I would rather just be able to meet him, shake his hand and talk to him and listen to him play for one night and then, you know, have the guitars go back. What to, guitar would he be playing? Actually, he'd be playing his uh, he'd be playing his SG custom, the white SG custom. Mm-hmm. Uh, three pickups. SG custom. One I described tonight, except for it's white and not ugly brown poo. But uh, yeah, I would like to hear him play that guitar and just watch him in in the flesh play and sing using a white curly cable. That's right. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Made by Gil. All right. All right. So, Gil, how about yourself? Man, I'm still thinking. I th- I would have to say I would rather have the guitar. <laughs> because you can you can hear them play on record. You can see most most people. You can see them play your know, concerts. 
um, you know, recorded. Uh, but the guitar, you know, that's, yeah, I'm, I'm going to say I'd rather have the guitar. Okay. Um, hmm. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah, it'd be great, great seeing, you know, um, Jesus. Uh, you chose yeah. the guitar. You chose the guitar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So like, whose guitar would it be? Oh, man. Tony Orlando's? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's still alive, by the way, I think. <laughs> <laughs> who's Sorry. guitar? Oh, man. Um, one of Lead Belly's uh, old Stella 12 strings Ooh. would be really cool. Uh, yeah. Oh, man, there, there are a lot of dead guitar players. Um <laughs> Very good. One yeah. of uh, Johnny Ramone's Mose rights. Oh, that that that'd be Great. something. Um, uh, all right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, geez, there's not that I'm a huge Mose or a huge Ramones fan. I'm a big fan of Mose rights, but uh, okay. yeah, <laughs> that uh, so many guitars, so many dead people. It's hard to choose. Yeah. Um, but definitely the guitar. I would definitely use the. Interesting. Yeah, I've seen a lot of shows, uh, and uh, yeah, I, I've 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 worked at a lot of shows, and um, although it'd be great to see, you know, say Jimi Hendrix play, yeah, I can I can watch it on video and still have a guitar after. You know, you get the you can, the guitar is going to last longer. You know, you get one night. Yeah, with that's with true. This person. Person and there's also Van Halen. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah. And yeah. There, there's always the danger of meeting one of your idols and being <laughs> crushed <laughs> and disappointed. Yeah, forever, I was absolutely you bring me back. You brought me back. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I, I think I might surprise you guys here. Um, this one. Uh, I struggled with a little bit. I kind of vacillated on a couple different things, but when I came down to it, like I, like when I was going through them, I hit this one and I got my heartstrings kind of like pulled a little bit and I would definitely want, um, to have a private show with Tom Petty. Mm. That would, I would need a, uh, that would be, that would be the thing for sure. Like I would be an emotional mess for sure. But, uh, um, hey, we saw him live together the last time. We, we sure did. Him. We sure did. And yeah. and he would be playing uh probably his uh on? the the uh what is it? how about the uh the three forty fire glow? Oh um, which one? The one that's on the cover? That's a no that's that's a six sixty, isn't it? Yeah, six yeah. twenty, six sixty, whatever yeah. it takes. Um but no, I like the bigger <laughs> one. I like the big yeah. <laughs> I like the the bigger one. So, <laughs> oh, okay, yes, yeah, everybody likes the bigger one, right? Yeah, well, <laughs> hey, oh, uh, anyhow, so that's what I that's what I would do, I think, um, for sure. Nice, yeah, I like it, I like it, yeah, anyways. So, Gil, so Gil is on his own island this time, yeah, yeah, hey. I'm, I'm usually on an island by myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's kind of hard thinking about like, you know, it'd be cool to have somebody come back, but I'm like there's got to be an emotional connection there. Yeah. It can't just be because, I mean, it can, I suppose you could make it do whatever you want, but uh, that's, that's where I, cause I was going with the guitar, but then I was like, no, no, that wouldn't. Cause even now there's some songs that I'll be making dinner and I'll hear that or I'll be driving. And it's like, it just tugs on the heart. Cause nobody yeah. likes anybody else that has somebody's like, I don't, I don't like, uh, Metall Metallica, uh, what's his name? Kurt Kurt Hammond. Hammond. I've liked that guy forever until he had, you know, ended up with Peter Green's Les Paul. Oh, that's right. That's right. Oh, no, you just ugh, like you don't belong having that guitar. What? That Why? Why not? The guy's got all the money in the world. Why can't he have that? Said so. no, because he has it. He shouldn't have it. Why? <laughs> I because I just don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> So I actually saw him last year, but nice guy. Yeah, but eh, I don't know. Did, uh, next time you see him, you should tell him that. <laughs> All right, everybody, we're going to uh, so we got to thank a few people, and then we're going to wrap oh, yeah. this little ditty up here. Tony Boney, 
already do we have some people to thank. Take your time, Tony. Okay, thanks, Jared. I think I will. I'm going to stretch this a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> At this point of the show, there's a special, special group of people that we love to thank. Um, these are our executive producers, and these folks help make this podcast possible. If yep. you would like to become an executive executive producer, head over to patreon.com forward slash the guitar knobs. You can find a couple different levels in which you can participate. And there's plenty of great thank you gifts, including things like t-shirts and barefoot buttons and stickers and picks and oh geez, all the good stuff. Keychains. Did I say keychains? Yes, I did. All the good stuff mm-hmm. comes your way. But there's a very special level, our executive producers, in addition to all that great stuff, they get one more thing. What is that, Jared? I have their name read on the thing. Name read on the thing. That's what I'm going to do right now. So a special thanks to Mr. Tom Barazin, Martin Cliff, John Daly, Chris Carney, Darren Gregory, Doug Christ, Michael Van Zant, Ken Sayers, Brian Robison, Michael Senchuk, Stefan Lamb. Johnny Knowles, Anthony Lanthrop, John Anglin, Tyler Bray, Brad Partridge, Chris Heidel, John Esterley, Doug Gann, Justin Jones, Brett Alexander, James White, Matt Hart, Liam Martin, James Pennington, Richard Kendall, Ty Carmen, John Williams, Michael DeLucio, John Jackson, Jason Rausch, David Dando, Douglas King, Gary Cooper, Tyler Raines, and Rob Saxby. Right on. Oh, wait. Wait, there's more. <laughs> yes. Just, just when you thought I was finished. No. There's uh, the 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 upper, upper echelon executive producers. We like to call them our grand poobas. They get a special fez to wear while listening to the podcast. That's right. So special, special, special thanks to these grand poobas. Jonathan Jerusik, Corey Nigro, David Kaminga. Cody Lane, Cody Foster, Sean S. Yes. Tommy yes. Manasco, Mark Garten, Adam Johnson, Steve Keys, and Tim Nowak. A tip of the fez to y'all. Right mm-hmm. on. Thank you so very much. So, Gil, where can people find you to get your stuff? Let's tell them one more time, will we? People can find me in our shop and the backyard of our property, <laughs> Portland, Oregon. I am there. I don't leave. Either, if I'm not in the house, I'm in the shop, which is most of the time, especially late at night, you can find me working. Um, you can find our cables at a lot of independent retailers around the world. Uh, you can find out which retailers have them at uh, divinenoise.com at the de- on the dealer's thing. You can, if you don't want to go through dealers, if you just have to go through us, which is fine. With us, there's always a wait. Uh, Generally, there's always a turnaround where our dealers, you know, if they have it in stock, they have it in stock and you can get it. You can can get it quick, fast, in a hurry. Yes. Yes. Um, With us, I mean, like I said, I'm still catching up from the holiday rush. So you can find us at divinenoise.com. Tony Baloney, how about yourself? Just head over to PickGuardian.com. Check out some of the stuff that I have available, things you can order right from the website. But by and large, what I do is custom, custom, custom work. So get a hold of me. Shoot me an email. Let me know what you need. I'll be happy to take care of you. That's right. Tony is my local pick guard maker guy. (laughs) (laughs) And Jared is my local pickup maker guy. Mm. Which you can find at brandonwoundpickups.com. We make new stuff that looks old and new stuff that looks new. What do you know? And old Uh, stuff that looks old. That's right. Uh, (laughs) We do. And those are our restorations, our rewinds. You can watch episodes of Rewind Time with Brandon Wound Pickups. Oh, Um, hey, Jared, whose pickups are you going to put into that SG? uh, (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. Either mine or Gibson's. One of the other. Mm. How about some screen tops. Yeah, I could do that too. Yeah, I wouldn't mind that. It's purple sparkle. I could. I don't know. What do you think I should? I don't Bring know. It. You don't Bring it out. Yeah. I'll call Jason Lawler see if he can hook me up. <laughs> right no, on. A, yeah. Excellent. Yep, he's well, a good- 
make sure you go check out uh, Jared's Jared's uh, pickups because they are pretty sweet. Yeah, the New York Jared accent. Yeah, man. <laughs> it's gonna stick. I'm just gonna be a thing. You be gonna be uh, go, going through Nam and everybody's gonna go Jared. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, you can drop me an email, Todd at theguitarnobs.com. You can also send me a DM on Instagram at guitarnobs, and I'll be sure to share out whatever you have to say with the two fellas here. Yep. And uh, we want to say a ginormous thank you to Gil Divine for joining us tonight and talking about his awesome cables. Thank you for having me, guys. I I, I don't do things like this often. Just um, so it, it 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 was very nice to. It uh, makes it sound dirty. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, I, I, it was it was quite painless. Thank you very much for that. Good, good. That's what we, that's what we shoot for. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I will uh, wish everyone, along with my two co-hosts, Tony and Jared, whom I love and respect, uh, to have a great guitar week. All right. What do you need now, Todd? <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk later. And subscribe. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I wonder where Tony Baloney is. Wow, you are sound fantastic. Wow, thank you. Yeah. Uh, must be the mic on MacBook Pro. Or your swarthy voice. I'm not really sure. <laughs> <laughs> Jared, are, you're so full of information. I know. And Tony Baloney is usually right on time. There's not a lot of steak or, you know, uh, pizza or good <laughs> shit like that. It's, it's all <laughs> veggies, chicken. Lasagna. It's all dog so theory. wait, it's you're all saying in ramen. Korea there's not a lot of pizza? You shrinking? Yes, <laughs> on that keto stuff, yeah. <laughs> I've lost about 12, 13 pounds. Yeah, so. and an inch in height. That's amazing. There's no sandwiches. <laughs> yeah, but I haven't heard that, so it's funny to me. Yeah, it's usual. <laughs> <laughs> Jared. Oh, Tony Abalone. Hmm. That's no lasagna. Well, that's it for these knobs. Please visit our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash the guitar knobs. Visit our website at theguitarnobs.com for all of our past episodes, four on the floor blog, and other good stuff. You can connect with us on social too at our Facebook page and share your gear and stories on our Facebook group. Also, be sure to check out our Instagram at guitar knobs. Catch you next time.